title Marco's magnificent journey tales from the Silk Road. Setting sail young Marco's dream. In the heart of a lively Italian city named Venice, with its winding canals and bobbing gondolas, there lived a boy named Marco Polo. The whispers of the sea carried tales from distant lands, filling the air with mystery and wonder. And among the curious souls who soaked in these stories was young Marco. Each day after his chores, Marco would rush to the city's bustling docks. With his feet dangling over the water's edge, he'd watch his ships, heavy with cargo, unfurled their vast sails, preparing to dance with the winds. These ships were more than just vessels of trade to Marco. They were keepers of secrets, adventurers that touched shores Marco could only dream of. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the skies in hues of gold and crimson, traders would gather around fires, their shadows dancing upon ancient cobblestone streets. They'd share tales of their voyages, speaking of deserts, or sands told tales of old, of mountains, whispering legends to the skies, and of vast, unfamiliar empires. Among these traders were Marco's own father and uncle, Nicol and Matthew Polo. They had traveled the famous Silk Road, a grand path connecting the distant east with the west. When they spoke, their eyes sparkled with memories of their adventures, and young Marco would listen, completely entranced. He'd imagine himself crossing those same deserts, meeting people of fire of kingdoms, and trading in bustling markets, filled with the music of strange tongues and the aroma of exotic spices. One evening, as stars began to twinkle overhead, Marco's father pulled out a shimmering piece of fabric, as soft as a whisper and as light as the morning breeze. This, he said, holding it up for all to see, is silk from the heart of the east. The fabric caught the firelight, glistening and casting a spell over all who looked upon it. For Marco, it wasn't just so. It was a promise of the adventures that lay ahead. That night, as Marco lay in his bed, gentle hum of Emma's water sang him to sleep. But in his dreams, he was already on a ship, its sails catching the wind, taking him to lands of wonder. Dream was so vivid, so real, that when he awoke, Marco knew one thing for certain, he was destined to journey the Silk Road and see the word marvels for himself, traversing the mysterious Silk Road. The Silk Road was no ordinary path. Stretching over vast lands, it was a maze of routes, some winding through scorching deserts, others traversing icy mountains and yet others meandering through dense, whispering forests. As Marco grew, so did his desire to embark on this epic journey, to tread the same paths his father and uncle had walked upon. They Marco had so eagerly awaited finally dawned when he, alongside his father, Nicol and Uncle Matthew, set forth on their great voyage. They were not alone, they traveled with a caravan of merchants, their camels laden with treasures from Venice, ready to be exchanged for the jewels of the East. Journey was both magical and challenging, Marco felt the deserts burning, kiss on his skin and marveled at the endless sea of golden sands. Here, the nights were a spectacle. As the sun bid good day, dipping beneath the dunes, the sky transformed into a canvas of stars, each shimmering like a diamond. But with its beauty, the desert also bore tests. Sandstorms roared without warning, swallowing the path, and the caravan had to stick together, guided only by the stars and their unwavering spirit. Merging from the desert's grip, they reached the formidable mountain ranges. Here, the air was thin, and the cold, biting. Marco saw the world from dizzying heights, gazing at valleys and rivers that looked like mere threads from above. He felt the chill of snowflakes on his face, a stark contrast from the desert's heat. These mountains held secrets, legends of ancient travelers and mysterious beasts. As they ventured through dense forests, Marco was introduced to a symphony of nature. Birds of colors he'd never imagined, sang melodies of welcome, and the rustle of leaves told tales of the wind's journey. They met tribes with traditions so unique, Marco often sat with village elders, absorbing their stories like a spong. At bustling marketplaces along the way, Marco witnessed the magic of trade. Exquisite spices, precious stones, and handcrafted artifacts exchanged hands, each item holding a story, a piece of the vast world he was beginning to understand. With every step, Marco penned down his experiences, he knew these were not just travels, but lessons, lessons about the world's diversity, its wonders, and its shared humanity. Kingdoms, deserts, and dragons' wonders of the East. The further Marco traveled, the more the world unveiled its wonders. Now deep in the East, he was far from the familiar canals of Venice. The thrill of discovery made every place feel like home. One day, as the sun painted the sky in brilliant shades of morning, they reached a grand city with towering walls and majestic gates. 
Marco learned it was called Samarkand, a jewel of the Silk Road. Marketplaces were alive with chatter, traders from all corners of the world, showcasing their wares, from shimmering fabrics to intricate crafts, and Marco, with his insatiable curiosity, listened to their tales. As they moved further east, they encountered vast deserts. Here, Marco heard of legendary creatures' dragons. While he never saw one, he met travelers who spoke of these mighty beasts with reverence and awe, their tales, adding a touch of magic to his journey. The East wasn't just about grand cities and legends. It was in the small villages, nestled between mountains or beside certain lakes, where Marco found the heart of the East. He sat with villagers, tasting their unique foods and listening to their songs. They taught him games local children played, and Marco, with a child's heart, would join in, laughter echoing in the air. One evening, in a quiet village, an elderly woman shared a tale of a magical bird that sang once in a lifetime. Its song, she said, brought prosperity and harmony. While Marco never heard the bird, he realized that his journey was like its song. Once in lifetime adventure, bringing with it wisdom, friendships, and memories to last an eternity. Lessons from Kublai Khan. As Marco's journey continued, whispers of a powerful ruler echoed through the lands. A Mongol emperor named Kublai Khan. His empire, they said, stretched vast and wide, with cities that touched the clouds and rivers that sang ancient songs and as fate would have it Marco's path. Let him right to the heart of this grand empire. Arriving at the gates of the Great Khan's palace, Marco felt a flutter of nerves. But when he stood before Kublai Khan, Great Emperor's eyes didn't reflect intimidation, but a sparkle of curiosity. Kublai had heard tales of the young Ganesian traveler, and was eager to learn of Marco's homeland, its people, and its wonders. Impressed by Marco's knowledge and eloquence, Kublai Khan appointed him to various roles within the empire. Marco found himself traveling once more, not as a curious wonder, but as an envoy of the Great Khan. He ventured to far corners of the Mongol Empire, from bustling cities to quiet villages, gathering tales and knowledge. One memorable evening, Kublai Khan invited Marco to share a meal. As they sat, surrounded by the soft glow of lanterns, Marco narrated tales from Venice of its shimmering canals and mass carnivals. In return, Kublai spoke of his ancestors, of battles one, and of dreams for a united world. For Marco, this was more than a journey across lands, it was a journey through time, understanding histories, cultures, and the dreams of great leaders. The young explorer realized that while worlds apart, people everywhere shared common dreams of peace, prosperity, and understanding. As the days turned into months and then years, Marco became a bridge between the East and the West, bringing two worlds closer with his tales, observations, and genuine love for discovery homeward-bound memories and marvels. After nearly two decades in the East, Marco's heart began to tug him back to Venice. The canals, the familiar aroma of his mother's cooking, and the lullabies of the sea, the call of home was strong. But with that longing came a heavy heart, for he knew he'd be leaving behind the world he'd grown to love. On the eve of their departure, Kublai Khan, now not just an emperor to Marco, but a dear friend, gifted him a golden tablet. This tablet was not just ornamental, it was a symbol of Kublai's trust, ensuring safe passage for Marco through any territory under the Khan's rule. The journey back wasn't easy. The Silk Road, with its challenges and wonders, awaited them once again. This time, Marco traveled as a man full of memories, each bend in the road, reminding him of an adventure, each whisper of the wind, carrying tales of friendships forged. As they crossed deserts, mountains, and dense forests, Marco would often sit by the campfire, gazing at the night sky reminiscing about his encounters with mysterious tribes, majestic cities, and the wise Kublai Khan. He knew that while he was heading home, he was also carrying a piece of the East with him, in his heart, and in the pages of his diary. Finally, after a long and arduous journey, the shores of Venice appeared on the horizon. As the familiar sights and sounds enveloped him, Marco felt a rush of emotion. The boy who had once dreamed of distant lands was now a man who had lived those dreams. But Venice was in for a treat, for Marco returned not just with treasures and artifacts, but with tales so incredible that they would be spoken of, shared, and marveled at for generations to come. The End Thank you for watching. Please give a like and subscribe. Thank you.